lecture in ICC lab um, and the Indian department in ZHW. Some of you may have worked with us in the past. Some of you may, may already know Thomas and uh, work in his team. To be frank, uh, I feel a bit uh, not very comfortable giving this talk right now because we have had two great talks before me from CTOs and CEOs of a company that sell CRM and OSS and BSS systems for cloud systems. And I'm going to give a talk uh, which basically aims to provide a, a very generic rating charging and billing platform for OpenStack and later also CloudStack uh, in, in complete uh, open source um, uh, belief. So, don't hate me. <laughs> but maybe you can work together. So the, the outline of my talk uh, would be, I'll just give a brief um, introduction on the accounting process. Um, I, I will do that because it's important to understand different phases uh, in, in how you make money and, and that's how we, uh, we take uh, motivations on building our uh, open platform. Uh, we call our system uh, Cyclops. Um, it's a charging platform for open stack clouds. Uh, it's a weird um, acronym uh, from, from this long uh, statement here. Then um, I will talk a bit, a bit about the architecture that we are um, developing in the process of development uh, uh, right now. Uh, then uh, I will give you the roadmap, how we foresee uh, the platform to evolve uh, in the next few months until the, the next year. And we have a brief demonstration of a system that, that is already uh, uh, you know, um, uh, fully accessible on GitHub. You can go there, download the code, and learn it yourself. The only thing is it works right now for, for OpenStack, uh, but the system is quite generic and extending it to, to CloudStack is not, not that far away. I mean, I know uh, there are a bunch of guys in the room. Uh, for instance, the, I think the next talk uh, uh, is, I, I heard you talk also in the in the OpenStack user group meeting in Zurich, uh, and you use Telligent as a building platform, right? Yes. Uh, yes. So, 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 so maybe um, we could also look into this platform and see how it fits into your workflow. So, making money is not easy. All of you know you are from company, but I'm not. So, <laughs> <laughs> these are the various steps that are involved uh, if you look into the, the overall accounting process. So metering uh, is, is something um, which is quite essential. It, it, it measures the, the resources that are used by your end user. There are a lot of uh, open source uh, tools already available for, 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 for doing uh, quite reasonable metering. For OpenStack, it's called Cinemeter, now known as Telemetry. I will go a bit in that um, uh, description also later. And mediation is the next stage um, where basically uh, you have metered data coming from you know, different kind of resources. You have user data coming from networking services, uh, data coming from storage services or compute services, and they may look a bit different. So mediation basically what it does is basically um, you know, uh, rehashes those, those data and, and make them somehow look uniform um, so that it's easier to, to process by, by other systems. Uh, in the pipeline. Mediation could also be useful, although I don't see how it could be useful right now, but in a scenario where a customer um, uh, could have his um, uh, workload deployed on multiple clouds. So, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's deployed on a base cloud, but in terms of uh, high uh, capacity um, uh, window, it could be cloud bursted into, you know, public clouds like Amazon or um, EchoScale or, or any other public so in that case, an external use of information uh, could also be brought into the system and they need to be harmonized with what is uh, processed internally. So that's also false under mediation. Next stage is accounting, which, you know, given its name, it's, it's not entirely just accounting. It's, it's, it's also doing a lot of things. Uh, like, you know, there are a lot of federal mandated rules like you know you need to maintain the, the, the customer use information for the next five years for instance the billing information for the next two years those kind of things. So how do you how do you properly store it? How do you secure the data? Uh, how do you um, uh, you know somehow uh, check the data which is coming from external sources whether they are uh, direct or not. So uh, those all things um, you can do here before finally working with it. Now pricing um, 
could some 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 person can uh, can also call it as rating. <coughs> so, rating traditionally in a, in a in a telecommunication uh, world would mean that how do you price a unit of consumption of a particular resource? And um, pricing, in a similar term, could be you know given the the, the usage uh, history of the of the user or given the the, the environment that is right now, what kind of pricing function do you apply to what usage data that you're receiving from the system? <coughs> so it could be static, it could be dynamic. Uh, static case is very easy to, to, to implement. You just have a static um, arithmetic formula with, with different um, uh, resource um, uh, um, IDs and you just uh, apply the arithmetic formula to it and you get some sort of cost for that uh, resource usage. It could be dynamic, uh, for instance, uh, like Amazon does the spot pricing. If, if the resource uh, load is quite high in a particular window, uh, you could dynamically change the pricing rules, and, and um, you know, and, and then depending on that, uh, you know, something different is, is applied every time a, a, a resource usage data comes in. Now, charging um, is, is is basically again from a telecommunication world where you have uh, a person talking on the phone people always talk about sessions. So charging is basically applying the, the pricing function on all the usage data records of a user session. And that, give, that gives you a charging uh, uh, data record, or CDRs. But uh, in, in cloud um, environment, um, this could as well be simplified as simply applying the pricing function to a user data record and you get a, a charge data record. It's quite simple as that. And, and then billing is basically something that you do, um, you know, depending on the policies, either a weekly cycle or a bi-weekly, fortnightly cycle, or even a monthly or a six-monthly cycle, depending on whatever is the billing policy, you collect all the charge data records. You combine them together, you do some um, uh, arithmetic uh, magic to it, you apply all the discounts you want to apply there, you want to apply any penalties for late fees, or whatever is the rule that is there before you generate the PDF. Uh, that's, that's what billing is. And then once you have the PDF, which is the result of the billing phase, you simply send, send that PDF to the clear, clearing uh, department, which basically sends it to the customer, follows up, uh, makes sure that the customer has, has paid it. Uh, so this is something which is the, the general outline of an accounting process. So you know, people might imp implement the solutions in a different way. Uh, people may, uh, may combine a bunch of these points into one module. It's all fine. I mean, there's no one coordinated <coughs> way of implementation of, of, of uh, Now in, in OpenStack, um, C-Demeter, um, now telemetry, actually does a quite good job of, of, of doing metering. Um, they have a very comprehensive system where they uh, uh, often pull the, the usage data from, um, from various uh, OpenStack um, services like uh, Nova for compute, uh, Glance and Cinder and Swift, uh, for instance. Uh, in case there is some period of inactivity, um, then you know, uh, Cilometer can pull the data. Or, and, 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 and the individual OpenStack services um, are also designed that they also periodically send data to, to Cilometer. This is quite um, flexible. If you have a new kind of service, you can very easily create your own meter. Uh, and, and the system is, is quite scalable uh, uh, in that sense. So, so Cilometer out of the box uh, provides um, uh, data gathering for all the key OpenStack um, services, like I mentioned before. But you know you can easily extend it uh, to anything that you want. Uh, if you have, for instance, I don't know a, a platform as a service on top of it, you register it with uh, Keystone, and then you create a, a new meter for it, and then start push, pushing data on that meter. And see you we capture it. Now, so what's the ecosystem that looks like in, that, that looks right now in, 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 in the space of ecosystem around um, uh, OpenStack? So I don't know if you can see or not, but it's the same figure from before. But in the accounting process, um, uh, where you do billing and financial clearing, uh, the two very prominent open source uh, tools available are CentrosDB and JBilling. Many of you might have uh, already be, uh, uh, been working with these components. For the other remaining part, uh, except metering, because metering in OpenStack is handled by Cilometer, as I told you before. 
uh, mediation, accounting, pricing, charging, and all those things. There are a lot of uh, very well-known companies, uh, Allegiant, uh, Globetom, which is a company based in New Zealand, there are cruisers, <coughs> taxi. The thing is, you know, uh, these are all commercial companies. Um, they have very good products, no doubt, um, but uh, keeping the spirit of open source, uh, something is lacking in the open source community in this regard. There were some tools available for for, for OpenStack. Uh, uh, they were called like Nova Billing, Price Stack, Dash Billing, Doe. The only problem is the last code commit was almost two years ago, and there was there has been no code commit, so these these things are, are now no longer maintained. Uh, I have not done any any investigation in this regard, but I suspect that most of their coders may, may have been picked up by it, you know, intelligent and, and other companies. So our impression is that there is a, 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 a true lack of comprehensive open source uh, rate charge building engine for, for open stack clouds. So you all know there's a ring to rule everything. Now we propose Cyclops, which will oversee all the uses for it, how the trust each other. So in, in a very high level uh, description, uh, the idea of Cyclops is uh, that, you know, although it's, it's right now we are positioning it as, as, a, as a platform for OpenStack, but it, it need not be, it's, it's, it's quite generic by design. So all the metrics that are relevant uh, uh, can be pushed uh, to a messaging um, system, and then from the messaging system, they are picked by uh, the system that we are designing, and then uh, it goes through all the accounting processes that I have shown you before, and then based on the policies and rules of the businesses and also the, the relationships that, that may exist between uh, a particular vendor and a different vendor um, uh, bill could be generated. Although we don't, we don't do billing, um, <coughs> which means that we don't generate the PDF, but we do all the things before that. But that's something which is also in the roadmap, which I will cover uh, later on. So uh, a bit more uh, diving into the idea. Uh, you know, uh, we have Cilometer and OpenStack here, and what we have developed is that we have a rabbit MQ sender, which basically um, uh, periodically uh, sends the, the user data for various um, resource meters to a, a, a rabbit MQ uh, exchange, and then depending on uh, the, the exchange uh, key, it gets redirected to you know one key, one queue or another queue, and uh, this is something. Uh, which enables us to then uh, you know, bring in external services like you know, on top of uh, uh, OpenStack if you have Cloud Foundry or OpenShift and you know what kind of metrics you, you need to monitor in, in Cloud Foundry and, and OpenShift for, for, for instance, then you can have your own um, uh, RabbitMQ client which is a very simple, um, hardly 40 lines of Python code and then you can push the data onto the exchange and then you can use that data later on to design uh, a, a policy to do a comprehensive um, charging and billing. So not only just using the, the inclusivity metrics, but also metrics from other services. Now this this is um, uh, something which is quite scalable. It has been tested and, and has been used in a lot of uh, projects itself. RabbitMQ uh, is also quite heavily used in, in, in OpenStack itself. They use it for internal messaging. So it's, it's a proven technology that we are using in our solution. And this is the, the overall picture that we are, we are aspiring to implement uh, in, in the next few months and in the next years to come. Uh, where we basically uh, uh, get the data from uh, Cilometer into a mediation module and we get um, uh, data from Cloud Foundry, for instance, and then we do mediation, harmonize the data together. And that creates the, the, the usage data records, which goes into the usage DB. And then based on the policies, although it's not shown here because this is an, an, an old architecture that I, have, I did not have time to update it. But there is, uh, there's going to be a rule engine, uh, which depending on, uh, on, the, uh, on the rules in the system, would, would know how do you want to combine the, the usage data records, uh, whether it's going to be a, a static pricing or whether it's going to be a dynamic uh, pricing depending on some, some triggers uh, and the uh, operating parameters of the environment itself. Uh, uh, which then uh, would create the charge data records and then 
you know, uh, the, the billing module will then pick it up depending on the billing policy and then create the bills which will be sent out by the, by the system to the clearance department. Um, this is a, a real uh, rabbit empty message that I have taken from uh, a few days ago. Actually, quite a few days ago, it's the 26th of May, which shows um, uh, for a particular user uh, in, in the OpenStack cloud, I specified the meter, uh, which is the disk uh, number of bytes sent from the disk storage, and it tells me uh, the metrics. And this is something which is found in the in the Navident Q message exchange. <laughs> so the, the development timeline is um, we have a, a release 1.0 planned by the end of July. And this would be um, already uh, a working system which you can use to, um, uh, uh, to, to, you know, you can start using basic meters from CWTER and you can specify static pricing functions uh, at this point um, and you can generate bills uh, in the system. Uh, but later on in this, uh, you know, uh, later on down the road, uh, we, we plan to, to actually make the system in such a way that uh, it, it could be easily packaged um, as uh, something that could be deployed on demand. Um, so, what by by that what I mean is that you you know you have um, the, the heat template uh, in place, you have the, uh, the orchestration logic in place, and then Meta Tenant comes to you and wants to have his own rating charging ability service. He can just click a button on Horizon dashboard, and then he has his own RCB service in the cloud. So that's, that's also something that, that could enable um, uh, a company to offer uh, customized rating charging link platform to their customers uh, using completely open source solutions. So no cost at all. Now, uh, I would... Yes, a question? So, mm -hmm. you said uh, most of these companies are clients. Clients can have their own like, charging billing, rating charging billing social these clients are what? So, <coughs> for instance, uh, so going a bit more into detail, um, ICC Lab is also involved in a lot of European projects, mm -hmm. and, and we are working in two of them currently. It's called Mobile Cloud Networking, is one, and another one is Sinoa, which is to offer uh, virtualized special functional service. Mm -hmm. So, in, in this project, what we are doing is uh, we have uh, telecommunication sector uh, players uh, like Italtel, BT, and all the big names, um, yes. PTI. Uh, and they have um, their own solutions, uh, and now they want to, uh, let's say, envision a scenario where you want to be a uh, MVNO, uh, mobile mobile virtual network operator. So you basically lease a bunch of resources from different players, and then uh, you want to have your own CRM system, you want to have your own billing system. Now, in, in, in that scenario, you know, you, you provision with IMS and PC and all those services, and then you provision your OSS basis services, you provision rating charging billing service, everything on demand. So, so that, that's one example. Um, it was easy for me to give this, this example because this is what we are working on, you know, on the project. But there could be a other, you know, lot of other examples also that you could imagine. You know, um, for instance, you, you, if you are a cloud uh, IS provider and you have a, a distributed reseller ecosystem, then they may want to have their own billing platform. So in that scenario, also this this plays out. Okay. So uh, I'm now going to invite uh, Thea. She is an intern in the lab, and she has been working uh, on the implementation of the system since last three months. Uh, a word of warning: the system is not very polished. It's still uh, being heavily worked upon at this uh, time. But she will show you uh, what 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 she has developed uh, can do uh, until today. But before, before, how much time do I have? Um, maybe another eight, eight, or eight, or eight, 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 eight or ten minutes. But before this, I just want to show you one thing. Um, if you actually track um, your uh, usage um, uh, data, you can also do uh, very cool um, statistics. Uh, so this is this is actually a running uh, RabbitMQ server that is running in the cloud in, in our lab. And uh, basically, the, the, the usage data record um, comes 
on to the exchange and it gets, gets uh, redirected to a particular queue depending on the exchange key. I'm going to show you the, the cloud usage that I've heard, which I'm tracking for our uh, uh, research partners for the last many days. And one thing uh, which I was surprised um, to, to see was how easy it is, it is to see discrepancy in the, in the behavior. So, So basically, this this last meter is is uh, network um, outgoing outgoing network bytes, if I'm not wrong. And you can see that this is a typical um, uh, daily network outgoing bytes uh, usage uh, value. But one day I was very surprised to see that this value was actually in the power of ten to the power of not. And that was because uh, they forgot to secure the virtual machine and they had a root account open. And that led to a TCP sync attack which was being generated from our cloud. So, so you know, if you have a pattern, then you can do very simple statistics and then you can uh, actually use this to, to basically warn your users here. This one. This one was just one day where the outgoing bytes from, from a particular VM was something e to the power of 11. And all the other pattern was you know 23 MB, 24 MB. And this was immediately caught by our IT and they actually blocked the, the system or something fishy was going on. So now I give it to Thea and she will show you uh, what, what she has been doing. student from Macedonia, currently doing an internship uh, in the ISIS lab alongside Fuge. So now I'm going to present the project we've been working on for the past couple of months. So this is the simple web interface. First, we're going to log in. Um, I think you should pass the microphone. Ah. There's a bug in, in Firefox that does not uh, redirect properly for this page, but actually it works fine with Chrome. <laughs> it's a work in progress. So here we can see that uh, the admin can uh, overlook all the pricing functions, the stack users that are in the database, and for example the tenants. So if we go to tenants, we get a list of all the tenants for, uh, for the admin. And we can choose a certain tenant, and we can use uh, and we can list all the users that are for that tenant. So over here, we can show the user status. So because this user has not been, yet been added, we 
can add it uh, to our database, and then, uh, <coughs> and then we can uh, calculate. So the key point here is that um, that the, this tool already identifies each user uh, in a particular tenant, and you can specify uh, an individual pricing function per user, even if he or she belongs to the same tenant. Don't know yet how useful that feature will be, but this is something that you can do. Yes. So uh, if we add a stack user, which doesn't have a uh, pricing function yet. <coughs> so over here we can define, specify a pricing function for the selected user, calculate a price for the for the user, or start a periodic counter. So if we go to specify pricing function, <coughs> this requires. It needs to process a lot of cilometer data. It takes a bit of time. In the meantime, uh, we can go back to seeing the status of the users, what other options are there. So for a user that already has the uh, pricing function that is defined, For instance, um, an example here is um, this is how a pricing function may look like. So, parameter one is the CPU, and then you multiply with the uh, 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 normalizing factor or whatever uh, <coughs> could be. You, know, you, know, this you thing. can choose of uh, the list. It, it gives a list of available meters, and you can choose one of those available meters. Apply a simple arithmetic operation, and then using that pricing function. Uh, you can uh, get the charge data records by applying the pricing function onto the usage data records that are being called by Sildometer. That's why I mean, uh, in, in doing demo, you should always prepare the laptop. I mean, uh, we, we never use this laptop before the demo. But you know, the, the idea is that um, so we have uh, uh, a Django front end which, which displays this this web front end, and then just this Django front end basically communicates to uh, a Python server which is on a different machine using socket communication, and then. Uh, you have the ability to uh, to specify the periodicity of uh, uh, of, of the uh, of the of the pricing function, 
and uh, basically what happens is that it reads the pricing uh, uh, formula from the database and then depending on the periodicity uh, applies the pricing function to all the uh, user data records and then generate the, the price information or the charge data record for, for the user. And uh, well, at the end of the presentation, I actually will show you the, the GitHub link where you can get the source uh, source file and, and run it yourself. There are some things that still need to be published, as, as you can see here. Uh, but uh, by the first release, which is at the end of July, we will make sure that things are uh, running as smoothly as possible. that the periodic counter has not yet been started. So we can go start a periodic counter. Uh, we can define a starting date, for example, yesterday. And we can get a data every five hours. So now every five hours, uh, it's going to get the meter data from kilometer, apply the pricing function, get usage data records, and turn them into charge data records. Let's show the user status. If we show the user status, we can see that the counter has been started and we can stop it if we want. And another feature is can calculate the price for a certain time uh, for a certain time interval. So not only like periodically, but we can define a starting date and an ending date and get a price for that period. I'm going to get back to the defining of the pricing function. So here we get all the available meters for every user of a resource for the user. We can choose one of those available meter, apply a simple pricing function choose uh, the currency and whether it sends or not, and then add according to the pricing function. There is also a user page where the user can uh, check the status of, uh, check his status or calculate a price like this for a certain, also for a certain time interval. And that's pretty much what we have. Yeah. So, so this is, this is uh, as I said, is a work in progress. Um, uh, you can do simple things. You can specify pricing functions for individual user in a tenant. So, if the user belongs to different tenant, you can specify different prices, uh, pricing function per tenant, and then you can uh, uh, control and run the, the periodic loop, which normally should be set to like one day. So every day, the use the, the users the users usage data is, is pulled from Cilometer the pricing function is, is, is applied to it and then the, the data is stored in the database for further processing. Um, so going back to the, to the talk. So basically that's the link to the code repository. Um, you can go download the code right now. Uh, the, the, the code, the most latest code is not in the master branch yet, it's, it's in, a, in, a, in, a, in a different branch. But you can follow all the different branches and get the code and, and deploy on the system uh, as long as you have an OpenStack cloud running. Uh, later on, uh, maybe early next year, we would uh, actually invest some time and, and see how easy it is to, to pull the, the metrics from CloudStack. Uh, but, but looking at the presentations from two pre previous presenters, it looks like it's not very difficult, so maybe it's, it's not that much of a time-consuming task on our part to also integrate uh, CloudStack in our solution. So that's all from me. Uh, uh, any questions uh, on our roadmap, on what I have said until now? Yes. Do you have product model behind? No, we, uh, ICC Lab is a, is a very firm believer in, uh, in open source community structure. Uh, we are actually um, uh, a key contributor also in the Auto project uh, in OpenStack. So the idea is that we, we can develop this um, and then contribute it to the OpenStack uh, project. 
uh, and it's up to the open stack technical committee to then later decide whether they want to make it a core product or, or no wrong the product model behind the bill all over to do the charging rating billing at the end yes actually so the customer buys some product and here it, it sounds to me like it's you do it uh, by hand for each customer or each user so so like I said, it's 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 only a two months work of effort, mm -hmm. nothing more. Um, she was working on it only two months, but in the roadmap, the idea is that we will have a very comprehensive rule-based engine, and that rule-based engine could be could be governed by what business products that uh, a business logic that you have uh, behind the product or behind uh, you know your your price model. Mm -hmm. um, we are actually also working with the. Um, um, uh, with the management uh, at the economics department in our university, and we are also looking into how we can do uh, uh, together with this department how we can do the revenue management processes, which is which basically also includes what we are doing.